I was in Würzburg during Christenacht in the dormitory. During that night in that dormitory, which was in a very small street in Würzburg, uh, in the middle of the night, we heard noise and they broke in. The janitor of, in that building, who was non-Jewish, he told us, get up, they are coming here and they're going to uh, make some uh, workers to so get up and be ready to leave. There were about 50 boys in this building and we stayed downstairs. We waited till about six, seven o'clock in the morning. Then the whole crowd of people came in, whole crowd. And they told us, go outside into the narrow streets. They have covered uh, stone streets in, the, in Würzburg and form lines of five, five abreast. In the meantime, they called all the populace in order to tell the world that it was not the Nazis, but it was the plain people, the plain people, you see, the usual people. And they were standing at the side, and we walked through there, through the street, and uh, they were calling us names, they were spitting, they were doing all kinds of And we passed by the burning synagogue. Then they put us into prison cells in the prison, you see. And I was in the prison with about 15 people <coughs> in the cells, and they kept us there. Every day, less and less people were in the prisons because they sent them to concentration camp. After six days, we heard the rumor, tomorrow we are empty the prison. That day in the evening, they called us again. It was Thursday evening, I think. And they said, you seven are free. Free, you can go. But you must report to the Gestapo the Secret Service police, within 24 hours, each one in his home set. Now, I tell you the reason why these seven were set, let free is because we are stateless. You see, how do you become stateless? You lost your citizenship. Because I, I was a stateless person. Because my father was Russian, he lost the Russian citizenship. The German citizenship we lost for a long time. So we were stateless. So next, so we had to go within 24 hours back to Bremen. We came to Bremen about uh, seven in the morning, and I called up my parents, but there was no answer. So I uh, took a streetcar, and I went to my parents' house, and I called there, and no answer. We have two entrances, one to the business, and one to the private quarters. I went to that door, and there was a, t there was a uh, little piece of paper that said, get the keys from the, from the police department. While I was standing there, on the other side, there was a furniture store and the non-Jewish neighbor, very friendly to us, and he didn't want to go out to talk to me, but he said to me, he beckoned me, come in, I won't tell you what happened during the night. He told me that during the Nazi night, uh, Nazis came in, in a civilian uniform and they called your father. When your father didn't come, they broke in there, and they went up to the uh, bedroom, and uh, there was my mother, and uh, uh, one brother, two brothers, because my sister was in Hamburg, and they asked my mother, where's your husband? Now, either she didn't want to tell them, or maybe she really didn't know, because my father went to this neighbor of ours, who told me the story, and he told him, I'm going to Sweden. It's a neutral country. He never went there. But they came up to the door and they asked my mother, where's your husband? Of course, she didn't know or she didn't want to know. I don't know. But when she said, when she didn't say this, they killed her. We found a bullet. Now, for Nazis, if you don't answer them, you see, it's, it's, a, it's a criminal act and you need this and they need to shoot you. So they shot you. And I didn't know about it, of course, for all the seven days. I was in prison. And afterwards, before I left Germany, I asked for a death certificate. You know what they wrote in the death certificate? On this day, on the 10th of November, at 4 o'clock a.m. in the morning, they found my mother dead. They had shot her. They found her dead. So I heard that two Jewish women buried her uh, on Friday. and. Uh, I had to go to Hamburg, to my relatives, because I couldn't stay there with no one. 
and uh, and I came to Hamburg on that day, and I found my father there. He was sitting shivering. That means uh, morning after uh, someone dies, and uh, I found him there. And my younger brother, because he was just by my sister, 13 years old, they had put into the orphan home. We wanted to leave Germany, of course, we wanted to leave Germany. Many Jews wanted to leave already right after Kristallnacht, and many did. But it was very difficult. My mother had written already to the whole world where we had acquaintances or so to help us get out. But they all said uh, it will not be so bad and it will pass over. But then after Kristallnacht, we wrote again to one of our my father's family is in Saskatchewan in Canada, you know. And when he heard about this, then he said he... <coughs> then he said he would do something, and he sent us a landing card. The landing card came in uh, February, and it was good for uh, three months, we had to leave. My father went to Hamburg, and he met a man from the Kunert White Star Line, and th this man helped us to get to Britain, and from there to Canada. My mother was always there, and I could always go to her, and she strengthened me, and she, uh, and she was my religious influence and I knew her and her family. And mother the mother. She was always a, a spiritual leader, and not only that, also in other ways, uh, our family life was very close, and, uh, and I miss her. And unfortunately, she was killed. There were many people killed in, in my family, not only that. Other fa family members were killed. My grandfather, for instance, my father's father was already killed in uh, Russia. There are always uh, bad things happening, uh, but we still believe in these people who gave us uh, a tradition and <coughs> who brought us up, and we always learn something from everyone. <coughs>